Hey guys and gals, my name is Rusty Ridenauer and I'm here with our club aircraft number 600 Sierra Uniform. And I want to welcome you to the first episode of many of the, of the OSU Flying Aggie safety briefings. Um, it's going to be a series where we are going to go through pre-flight, post-flight, um, what to do in stalls, what to do in spins, um, and a lot of good, uh, other good information. So you're really going to want to, uh, to be uh, focused and listen to these. They're going to be great, uh, great tips and tricks for you uh, to use when you're out flying around. So. Uh, today we're going to be doing a, uh, a pre-flight of our club airplane, November 600 CR uniform, kind of going over some basics and, and what to do on a, on a proper pre-flight and, uh, and how to, to go about that efficiently. So. Alright guys, so we're going to start the, uh, the pre-fight by um, looking at the plane initially when we walk up. Uh, we notice that the pedo cover is on, uh, so we'll go ahead and pull that off uh, got that with you. We're going to go ahead and leave the, the uh, toe straps on until we're completely done uh, pre-flighting and ready to go, just in case there's a gust of wind. We live in Oklahoma, uh, so you never know. We want to keep it secured and tied down. So we'll come back over this way here. and. This is when we would have our log books and everything. We'll have the book from the inside um, and we'll be checked out in the aircraft. Uh, so we'll come in here, we'll check our hops times, our tack, time, tack times, um, and make sure that they're uh, matching and ready to go. Um, we'll come over here and we're going to be taking the control lock off. So all you do is pull up on the yoke and pull the control lock out. I usually put it in the back somewhere along with the pedo cover. All right, so now we're inside the cockpit of November 600 Sierra Uniform. Um, we've got our master switch here. We've got all of our lights. We've got our circuit breakers. Actually, on this plane, it's so old, we have fuses, so we always want to check those and make sure they're good. Um, we have our carb heat, our uh, trim, throttle, and mixture, and flap lever. Um, we don't have a preset uh, condition for the flap, so you have to hold them down, um, and they will go down. We have 40 degrees in this aircraft, which is awesome, so we can uh, get down quickly if we need to. Um, we've got our basic six pack here, we've got our RPM, uh, we've got our uh, Bendex Keen radio, we only have one comm here. Um, our GPS we don't uh, is not functional right now, we're getting a new one so don't worry about that. Uh, we've got our transponder here and we have our nav, uh, our nav radio right there. Um, obviously tack time and, and things like that are right there. So uh, that about completes the inside. Um, we have a mirror which is always cool, you can look back, check your upwind track which is nice, but that's about the, uh, the interior here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and flip the master on, check all the lights, and then we'll go from there, all right? All right, so now we're at the exterior of the aircraft. We're going to go and pre-fly the outside and make sure it's good to go. We've got the inside done. Um, I usually start on the right side. Uh, per the checklist, it makes it a little bit easier and quicker to go around. Uh, you always want to keep your same flow each time you pre-flight. That way you don't miss anything. Um, you do have a checklist, obviously, so to help you with that. Um, but I found it's easier if you keep the same routine up. So we'll start here. We have our static system. We want to make sure that static port is unblocked. There's nothing in the way there. So that looks good to me. We've got our struts here, no cracks. We've got our vents, our pedo system looks clear. Uh, we've got our stall horn warning. It looks clear, we'll get to go there. Don't see any missing bolts or rivets. Now, if I had the master on, this is what I would be checking the light to make sure it works. Um, however, we're not trying to waste the battery, so we're gonna keep that off for now. Always wanna check and make sure your lights work. We'll come around here. Wanna make sure our nav lights work. Should have red on the left side, green on the right side. Make sure there's no cracks or anything. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cycle the ailerons up and down just to make sure they're free and, and, and nothing is uh, in the way of them. So I'll come over here, make sure we have our three weights to right here. Make sure all the bolts are on. Everything's tight. Good. I'll go ahead and pull it down. Again, this is where we would have our flaps down. We are trying to save the battery. We don't want to, uh, to lower them, but they, they would be lowered. We would be checking the springs and, and the, the linkages in there to make sure that they're tight and that there's nothing loose in there. Um, you do want this right here, your, your link to your uh, flap to be loose. You'll have to spin it or play with it just a little bit, just like you would a 72. 
Come back here, checking the empennage, everything looks good. Our struts look good, tires look good. Don't see any cracks or any kind of uh, missing bolts or rivets. Everything good here. Come back to the stabilizer. We've got our elevator here. We'll cycle it through a few times. Everything looks good, free of movement. All the bolts are good. We'll come down here and check our rudder. Go left here, go to the right. Everything looks good. You always want to make sure that these are tight and uh, properly secured. Looking good on the uh, rudder there. We've got our VOR antennas. And we'll come over to the right side. Trim tab looks good. You always want to make sure this is on and uh, properly safety wired there. Good. All right. Come back to the other side of the empennage. Again, no cracks, no missing rivets, things like that. You always want to look. Got your comm antenna, your ELT, and your GPS. Again, our GPS is in off, so that's not functioning right now. Again, we'll check our flaps on the left side, I mean the right side here. Same thing, making sure that things are uh, the secure and, and free uh, of, uh, of any kind of uh, gunk or anything like that. You don't want it to freeze up on you. We'll come check our other ALR out. There we go. Cycle it through a few times. All the bolts look good. We've got our three counterweights right here. Everything looks good. Come around here. Again, want to check sure, make sure this green nav light is working. See a few minor, you know, dings and stuff. That's just part of uh, aircraft ownership that happens uh, just over time. 60s old girl, we love her to death, but she does have some uh, some minor quirks here and there. So, so now we were coming to one of the most important parts of the whole pre-flight. You always want to check your oil. So right now, as you can see. We have our engine, we have our battery, and uh, the fuel strainers in there as well. Um, but here, this yellow, yellow cap right here is our oil. I'm going to turn it clock, counterclockwise, and we're going to check our oil. We always want to make sure we're, with, we're within five to six quarts of oil on this uh, airplane. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot, but it, uh, it definitely needs all it can. So, so that looks good in there. I always check the engine, make sure that there's no uh, bird's nest or anything that's going to uh, you know, catch on fire or something like that. Don't want to have that, obviously. Um, so we'll lock it, just push these little turn pins in, and they clamp like that. Make sure it's secure, you're good to go. Coming around to the propeller and the engine, I always run my hand along it, make sure it's firm, make sure it's uh, not gonna you know, wobble off the flight, don't want that, kinda need this thing. Make sure the spinner's good. Always rotate the prop. Now you wanna go clockwise with it, because you wanna go opposite of the direction that it turns. And that runs oil through the engine. Also, you can check the movement, make sure there's nothing that's blocking it um, and it's not uh, stuck to anything. Next, we'll look in the engine. Again, looking for birds, looking for nests, things like that that are gonna be uh, blocking our airflow and causing a could cause a fire. We look clear. Next, we'll check our air filter down here. Um, it looks good, free of uh, any kind of debris or anything like that. All right, so another important part of flying, obviously, is the wheels. We wanna check those and make sure there's a proper amount of tire inflation. We want to make sure that all the things are hooked up and linked up right. Uh, we'll check the cotter pin. There's one right there. It's not going to come off. Uh, we want to check the brake line, make sure that it's secured, um, that there's no leaks around because obviously that would mean we have a brake line uh, a leak, which is not a good thing. Um, the rotor looks good. All the bolts are there. So this tire looks good. We'll go ahead and go to the front strut as well as the other main and we'll check those out. So here we are with the front strut um, and the tire. Uh, as we can see, the tire has proper inflation. We have both cotter pins in on, the, on each side. Um, we're safety wired here. Uh, the strut and the, sh the uh, shock absorber looks good. There's a proper amount of cushion there. Uh, damper looks good. Our linkages for steering looks good. Um, also, we, we can while we're down here, we can go and check the muffler, and make sure there's no uh, nothing blocking the muffler. Is free air uh, that can flow through there. Um, everything looks good here, so I guess we're good on this one. All right. So now that we have our interior pre-flooded and our exterior, we're going to go ahead and look at the fuel as well as straining the fuel. So gonna hop up on this ledge here just like you would. Okay, so here we are on the left side of the wing. We're gonna go ahead and uh, check the fuel in this tank here. Uh, I don't have a fuel gauge with me. I need to get one, uh, but I don't have it with me right now. It is good to have to see exactly how much fuel you have, but obviously if it's at the top, we know that it's full. So we'll go ahead and twist it counterclockwise here. Look in there, everything looks good. It's to the top, so we have a full tank. Always wanna make sure this cap gets secured fast, or gets secured uh, back on very good because you don't wanna come it off obviously in flight. So we'll go over to the right side of the wing and take care of that one. All right, over to the top over here as well. So we're gonna be good on there. So we got 13 aside, so we got 26 total. 
which is always a good thing. Like I said, about two and a half hours to three hours of fuel. All right, so now that we've checked the top, uh, the tanks, we're gonna actually go ahead and strain those and make sure there's no water in the tanks. Um, I will say 60 is pretty bad about having water in the tanks, so always make sure you, you drain that fuel and, and check for water. Um, the seals are just not as tight as they used to be. Uh, you always wanna check that. All right, so here we have our standard gas jar that most of you got when you were uh, starting your private. If you don't have one, you can pick them up at the flight center. They're cheap. I would uh, highly, highly recommend getting one of these guys. Um, they really save your, save your butt. So, uh, 60 has three ports. We have one on the left wing here, one on the right wing. Um, they're at the very back, and then we have one in the fuel strainer. So, we'll go ahead and check this one here. I always do a good like three to five second pour because, well, like I said, there is a lot of water that gets in this aircraft, and you know sometimes a two second pour is just not enough to get it. Um, so we'll check it. I always walk out to the sun here. Okay, so we're here on the other side of the tank. We're gonna do another five second pour here. Okay, uh, it looks good again, there's no water. There's a couple of, uh, looks like some dirt, but it might be from the gas jar, um, as well as this is rusted, so it might be from that too. Okay, so now that we've checked the fuel in both the left and the right wing, we're gonna go ahead and check the fuel and the fuel strainer by the, the, uh, by the engine here. So it's this little fuel strainer, it says, says it right there on the thing, and you just pull that towards you, and it's gonna send fuel through the line down here. The line is right here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but be careful, it's right there. And so what we'll do is we'll hold this down here like that, and we'll have to pull on the knob at the same time. So we'll go another three second pour. Go. All right, looks pretty good. No water that I see. A couple things of dirt, but that's probably from the either fuel strainer or from the rust on there. So other than that, it looks really good. So we'll go ahead and close this back okay, up. Okay, so now we've got our fuel from both the left and the right side, as well as the fuel strainer. Now, a lot of times in other airports, people just take this fuel and they throw it on the ground. Um, here, we actually can't do that. You're not supposed to do that really anywhere, but always make sure that you put it back in the tank if it's free of water. If it's not, there's a gas tank that's uh, about 20 yards over there, and that's where we put the, uh, the fuel that it's contaminated. So if it's not contaminated, go ahead and put it back in the tank, and uh, that will keep EPA off our back as well as uh, it's better for the environment. So yeah, so we'll climb up here. Open the tank up, and I always pour, it's got a strainer, so I pour with the strainer, that way it's filtered and nothing gets through there. All right, good to go, we'll put the cap back on, make sure it's secure tight. There you go. All right, the very last thing we do before we go fly is we gotta take the tie downs off, obviously. So we'll take those off. Now make sure you always put the tie downs back inside the plane, because if you go anywhere, a lot of times airports will not have tie downs. So. Take these boys with you, you might need them, you may not, but it's always good to have. And it's SOP, so. Congratulations, you have just pre-flighted November 600 Sierra Uniform. Well, that about does it for the first episode of the safety briefings. Um, Pre-flighting an aircraft 101, as you will. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. And uh, you guys be safe out there. Happy flying and good tailwinds. Go Pokes.